Hey, what is up everybody? This is Derek from Game of Skins and welcome to my channel. I'm here to talk about personal finance, stock investing, money saving tips, so let's dive in. So in today's episode, I'm here joined by my special friend, Spammy, and we are so excited to talk about this um, company uh, that he's really excited about because that's where he's from. Um, and that company is Hormel Foods. Hormel Foods, um, some of you may not know, but it's actually a company that's over 130 years old. It has 52 uh, brands under its umbrella, and it is the first company that pioneered the canned ham can. So, so let's talk about this company because it's fantastic. Here we go. So let's talk about Spam. So Spam is this iconic, iconic uh, product and it is one of the first things that comes to mind when you talk about lunch meat. Lunch and meat is, we take it for granted and we go to the store and somehow we can a we're able to find meat that is packaged has a very long shelf life, as you would know, and it's readily available for you to eat, um, even straight out of the can. Um, there's tremendous history behind Spam. Spam dates back to a long time ago, and it also helped provide it in terms of a widespread usage of it because of World War II. Um, during World War II's Hormel company was actually supplying a lot of the soldiers, um, the American soldiers out around the world, and it provided this very safe and very well packaged meat that provided protein for the soldiers as they engaged in war. And because of that, um, these soldiers and the GIs, they shared the canned spam to the local inhabitants, you know, around the Pacific Ocean, South Korea, the Philippines, and as of now, there is tremendous, tremendous uh, following in terms of having this spam be part of their culture because of it. Other brands that you may also know is Skippy Peanut Butter. Peanut butter is pretty much a very, very healthy sort of diet, as long as you're not allergic to peanuts. And all what Hormel has done is that they're able to amalgamate a whole bunch of brands together to fit within its, old, in its own food umbrella. Um, they're able to supply something that people can recognize, that it's safe, easy, um, especially for the parent that you need to um, get the food ready or the person who is in a rush and needs to have the nutrition that's available and also that is um, refrigeration free possibly and that they know that the brand that they could trust. Lately Hormel has been expanding into the non-meats sort of uh, product lines and there you have seen that it has tried to uh, be partnered with uh, Yon Meats. Uh, unfortunately, that partnership did not fall through, so um, you have them developing their own, and it's called uh, Happy Little Plants. And it's their own version of uh, Beyond Meat sort of products, and it's also a bit of a competitor. And this supplies uh, Hormel with a different avenue stream to be part of what the trend is all about, where people want to eat healthy, um, possibly stay possibly uh, wean themselves away from meat and uh, this is, will lead them to more future growth. Um, lately they have made this amazing and huge acquisition of planters. Have you heard of Mr. Peanut? Well, Mr. Peanut is now under the Hormel Foods umbrella and with it it provides incredible synergies with its Skippy peanut butter. So whatever they can do, they can do it in terms of uh, economies of scale and provide in terms of the peanuts for both Skippy and planters. So why is Hormel such a great company? Well, I would like to say that uh, what makes a good investment and what makes it safe, I think is where you have big ownership of one shareholder and its product lines are resilient during times of economic turmoil or people need it um, and, it's a, and it's a staple. It's very hard for people not to buy it and Hormel fits that bill. Why? Because, you know, especially during the pandemic, you see a lot of people needing to stock up. What they stock up on mostly? Food. 
and food is by far the one of the most important things that humans need. So in terms of when the pandemic happened, people were so scared, they stocked up on what they can rely on and that's a lot of canned foods and Hormel supplies a lot of those canned products and processed um, foods that are have a long shelf life and people who they can trust. And another thing why Hormel is such an incredible safe company is because it is owned by a huge shareholder and that shareholder is the Hormel Foundation. The Hormel Foundation was actually set up by the founder and the son of the founder um, as a way to delegate their trust to their, to their, uh, to their own kids and the Hormel Foundation is still winding down those trusts but in the meantime it has three main objectives. One is to keep Hormel independent so it's not going to be bullied into selling Hormel to any bigger food company. Um, it's going to maintain its, its independence so that um, its, its quality and also its direction is maintained especially from the founding uh, founder and his son. So the Hormel Foundation actually owns 48% of the Hormel Foods stock. So that's an incredible ownership interest and they would like to see things run their way uh, because, because they hold such power on, on the company itself. Um, so with regards to that, uh, Hormel Foods are, is able to actually have a long-term view of things because they have such a large shareholder. It would be very, very difficult for a large shareholder like Hormel, the Hormel Foundation, to divest all of its shares. First of all, because it, it goes against their um, tenets that have been established by the founder of Hormel Foods, uh, where they rely, or it's towards the charitable giving, it's towards the charitable giving around the Austin, Minnesota area, and also towards um, the pay the, the support of uh, the whole founder's children as well as the son's children as well. So those trusts were set up so that you know once the last grandson or the last son or grandchild dies then that's pretty much ends because the Hormel Foundation was the trustee. Uh, the Hormel Foundation is actually a mixture that the directors of Hormel Foundation are actually a mixture of um, charitable, uh, charitable representatives that that's, that the Home Realm Foundation supports, things like the Salvation Army, the United Way, um, previous uh, heads of state, or the previous previous politicians uh, around the Austin, Minnesota area, things that have a vested interest that want to make sure that whatever charitable givings that are provided by the Home Realm Foundation. Foundation are supporting whatever it is. So things like the, Net, the Salvation Army would be quite interested to make sure that whoever is going to be the next director um, will have the same sort of charitable mindset to it. Um, but most of all, a lot of the directors of the Hormel Foundation are um, Hormel Foods executives, uh, but the majority of the directors are actually the charities who are also directors. So each of those charity, each of the directors actually have one vote. So each vote is equal and they all probably need to collaborate together to make sure whoever is elected next is going to make sure that uh, it's going to follow the tenets of the foundation and its charitable and trust um, guidelines. And it, the next part of its criteria and one of its three tenets is that it's going to provide um, charitable donations to the local Austin, Minnesota area. Um, so things that would support any sort of charities around where it's headquartered. And the third is its designation as a trustee to wind down these trusts that the founder and the son's, the founder's son has, has set up for their children. And what this provides is that when you have such a large ownership interest in a company, that main shareholder pretty much solidifies um, the culture. And the culture is terribly important because without culture, the company would not necessarily survive. It would not really um, navigate the economics of the world. Um, 
And with such a big shareholder, it can provide that long-term stability um, because, you know, somehow, sometimes there's these like short-term hedge funds that would come swoop in, buy a whole, a whole bunch of shares, somewhat like a uh, car icon sort of thing. It would just do what it can to like slash, slash costs and try to boost pro profitability, which is good in the short term, um, but it could also decimate the, the viability of some brands. Um, that was done, that, it, that could also be detrimental to the company itself. Well, so when you have a big shareholder like the Hormel Foundation, who has a very, very long-term view because its charitable donations um, rely on it, um, especially through the dividends that the Hormel Foods Company provides, um, those charities rely on the Hormel Foundation and the Hormel Foundation relies on Hormel Foods to be successful and to also grow in terms of its dividends that they pay out. So the amazing thing about Hormel Foods is that Hormel has, is what we call a dividend of aristocrat. They have been increasing their dividends uh, for more than 50 years, which is amazing because the more dividends that they provide, the more the Hormel Foundation could uh, pay out to uh, its charities, uh, also it's to its uh, the trust that are, are given to the founders' uh, kids, founders' children, and um, it is a fantastic way for the longevity of the company itself. So you yourself can pick up a few shares if you can, uh, where as long as you maintain that it's a long-term hold, it should make you very, very happy as, as a very stable ballast to your investment portfolio. So how do we know that Hormel Foods is actually a strong company? Well, let's look into the, the financial statements. So that you can found on the annual reports. And so far in terms of Hormel Foods, their balance sheet has shows that uh, there's a very low debt to equity ratio. So when it's below zero, um, that debt to equity ratio for Hormel Foods is actually a sign that its balance sheet can withstand uh, shocks to um, the, the company and is able to withhold, to, to withstand anything that could cause it economic pain. And with a strong balance sheet comes flexibility to do things like acquisitions, um, be able to have financing that is cheaper. Um, and we can see that if you were to look on the annual reports, look at the total liabilities divided by total equity, it's below zero. So that's a fantastic, fantastic way to have a fortress sort of a financial strength that Hormel Foods can rely on. And the other thing is that uh, they have retained a lot of their earnings. And with the retaining of earnings, they don't need to use as much debt, which is also a good thing. Nobody wants to see a company take on way too much debt, but rather it's recycling the money that it earns towards investments to, uh, of its current brands as well as making acquisitions. And the only way for a company to be uh, not dying is to keep growing, either through uh, supporting its brands to pivot towards um, other products and be on trend with what uh, the consumer wants. And you know, each year, each passing year, the consumer wants different things and you have to stay on top of it. And by reinvesting its earnings, they can make uh, further acquisitions and new product lines that could uh, make, uh, can make the consumers more uh, susceptible to um, buying this product. So then it's guys, um, me and Stanley want to say thank you. So drop a like, leave a comment, and we'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out, everybody.